Hi, so welcome back to uh, this series on the uh, Uno Synth from IK Multimedia. So in this one, we're going to have a quick look at the performance button section, and I think I'll cover the arpeggiator um, as well in this uh, this section. So obviously, with the performance controls, I used to sort of play, articulate the presets. So they include the keyboard and the performance buttons, which we've got here. Um, so I've got this preset because the performance buttons kind of set in the depth of them you need to do uh, within the uh, software editor. But I've set one up that has, you can kind of hear what it does. So basically what we've got, we've got vibrato, which is a bipolar oscillator pitch modulation for musical vibrato. So, so as you hold down a key and then gives you a bit of vibrato. It's almost like a mod wheel, basically, kind of thing you would get on other synths. Uh, we've got a wah, which is the next one, which is filter modulation for sort of a wah style timbrel changes. Um, basically on the other one the vibrato rate and the wah rate and also the tremolo rate coming up they are set uh, all these three are set in the LFO section how that affects it but I'll look at these in more detail in a later video when I get into a bit of sound design and really kind of getting under the hood with this and the, uh, the synth editor but just to give you an example of what it sounds like for now so the uh, the wah setting <laughs> Okay, then the tremolo. Okay, it's all that kind of um, stuff. And then we've got dive and scoop. So dive um, applies the filter envelope decay to the oscillator pitch uh, with a range of two semitones. So it kind of creates sort of a bend down to the played pitch. So that's dive. <laughs> And then uh, Scoop applies a negative filter envelope decay to the oscillator pitch with a range of two semitones, which is kind of a bend up sort of thing. Okay, so these are kind of like, I guess, the basic pitch bend and modulation wheel um, sort of stuff. The keyboard itself um, is totally flat. It's not you're not buttons that you're pressing. It's a capacitance sensing device, uh, so you can just play it with the swipe of a finger over it. Kind of makes it easy and difficult to play at the same time. I mean, you're never going to kind of play proper piano on this, but it's useful for inputting um, notes and stuff. Um, and obviously, when we're in the scale mode, which you looked at previously, which I'll do now, um, I'll put it into just major C major then it gets rid of those notes so it does make it a lot easier to kind of glide up and down uh, the uh, the keys and the the white notes on the bottom they also represent the 16 steps of the um, sequencer which we're going to look at in uh, a, a separate section we've also got a hold button just here which will hold the note for you okay it's very useful if you just want to you know have like a droney noise and then Mess about with filters and stuff. Do all that kind of nonsense. Obviously, we could bring some LFO in. So that itself is quite a useful uh, sort of little performance kind of um, thing. Uh, we're in set recording as well in the sequence of the hold button lets you change the duration of the note. Again, we're going to cover that in a later section. Um, presets, again, I've touched on brief briefly, previous, previously. <laughs> Why am I putting all my words together today? Anyway, uh, so we've got 100 presets and each can have its own sequence and settings. So each day it's individual. So you can have 100 different sequences in here. Um, which is quite nice. First 20 are factory presets, so you can't overwrite them. Obviously, you can mess about with the parameters, but you can't overwrite them. Uh, they're kind of, I guess they're sort of a demo thing, but some re reasonable sounds in there. Um, and then we've got uh, from 21 and above, we can um, overwrite those. And I've, I've done saving a preset in a previous um, video. And in terms of kind of like the factory presets, they are the hundred that you sort of get to start with are all uh, put in different categories of like saw bases and square bases and leads and pads and sweeps. I won't go through them because I've messed with them and hardly any of them are there now anyway. But um, 
Let's give you a few examples of what it sounds like. In fact, what I'll do is if I go through a few and just play the sequencer, you'll kind of hear what it sounds like. Uh, now I know why that's not working, because I've got... If you find that... Okay, here's a little tip for you. If you find that you try to play your arpeggiator in the sequencer and it's not working, it's usually because the uh, sync function has in the wrong thing. So if we press Alt and go on to sync, you can see that it's being synced by USB, so it's external synchronization through the USB. So I need to just turn that to... Sorry, I always do that. That's another thing is, I don't know why I always want to go to the cutoff dial to change parameters on here when... It's these that you change. Uh, so we need to have it on internal, and then now we can have the sequence playing. So I'll just skip through a few of them. Now, as you'll see, you can kind of, obviously, we could, you know, as it goes through, it will just play the sequences automatically on the next one. So you can kind of loop a few of them together. So anyway, a massive variety of sounds just straight away on there. So that, that I say, I'm going to cover the sequencer in a lot more in-depth videos uh, coming at later on in the series. I'm going to so we'll, we'll do the arpeggiator as well on this video. Um, so if we turn the arpeggiator on, let's get back to. A, um, so, okay, so now when it's using the internal synchronization, obviously the tempo is going to change. The speed, obviously, if it's synchronized externally, then we can that will change it to eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and so on. So, direction first of all. Let's start with. Uh, you see, I've done it again. <laughs> I always do that. It's kind of a weird one. I feel like that should change the parameters of that, but it's not. It's this. Um, so if we start with up. Okay, we've got up, down, up and down, up and down. Like as a variation. So what happens here? It plays the upper notes and the lower note twice. Um, down to up, uh, held notes play from the highest to the lowest, and then up to the highest again. Okay, then we've got a variation on that same as the other one. We get the double note. We've got random, which we'll just kind of do it in any particular order it feels like. We then got as played, which so if I... which is quite nice. Then we've got um, X to U, where each note in the arpeggio plays twice from the lowest to the highest. So it's basically doubling up each one. And then we get the same thing going down. So we can also set the range. So at the moment it's on two octaves. So it's going for three. So we can hold the arpeggiator with the uh, hold button as well. So you can go hands free, and then you can change it, your things as on the fly. And obviously, you've got all your controls. Thank you. 
have different settings for different presets, so if we just go through a few. Okay, so, oops. so in terms of arpeggiators, you know, it, it's a fairly powerful kind of thing, quite a useful tool as well. You've got, uh, I think, enough different variations to uh, keep it going quite well on there. And again, um, you know, it's just a nice little feature that this has that, for example, something like a Volca doesn't have, which is in the kind of the uh, the price range in this. So that's a little bit on the performance stuff. Like I say, I will get a bit more in depth with these, setting up these when we look at the uh, software editor. Um, and obviously the, the sequencer, I will do a, a separate video on that because that does get quite in depth. So. That's a little bit of an overview on that, give you a bit more idea of what this thing sounds like. Um, if you want to get into a cheap analog synth, then I you know, I can highly recommend this. It does sound really cool. You can get some pretty cool sound out of it. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and all the usual stuff. Uh, like, subscribe, share the videos around, check my music out. If you want to help uh, support the channel and get some free stuff, which will include some free patches eventually for the uno then uh check out my patreon page and go and subscribe to me on there it's either one dollar a month or three dollars fifty a month so it's a tiny amount of money but it does make a big difference to me okay thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next part cheers <laughs>